Hello, hello. This is Artsy Wisdom. My name is Diane. It's been a while. I've been busy with family here at the lake. So much is going on and I thought I would sneak away and uh, do a little video, maybe two, uh, politics. VP Harris is going gangbusters. Her rally, I think it's today in Georgia, is like maxed out and so many people are excited. They're still excited. Her honeymoon may eventually settle and might get back into a rhythm or might get into a rhythm, but I'm going to look into her VP candidate choices. Uh, I looked into their charts and I, you know, just surface and I wanted to compare them and um, do some meditations on them and pull some cards to see who would be possibly that she might pick. Um, I'm leaning towards a couple, but I'll let you know. I also wanted to look into the Project 2025. The director resigned, got kind of shoved out the door, stepped aside, whatever you want to call it. Um, something's going on with that and the Heritage Foundation. I also have some other questions, but I'll do those for another time. Today is Harrison or VP Picks. First of all, thank you so much for all my subscribers, those of you who give me lovely comments or even just likes, thumbs up. Thank you. I really appreciate it. All right, let's get started. Uh, Kamala Harris uh, is choosing between Mark Kelly. This is what the word on the street is. Mark Kelly, the Arizona uh, senator, and he is a uh, he was an astronaut, and uh, his wife is was hit, shot in the head many years ago. And he, Gabby Gifford, it's a it's a huge story in Arizona. Lovely, lovely human. And he was in the service. He was a pilot. I think he was a Navy pilot, but I could be wrong. Anyway, so there's Mark Kelly, Arizona. Josh Shapiro, Pennsylvania. Uh, he uh, is the governor, I think. Uh, Tim Waltz of Minnesota, also governor. Saw him speak the other day. Very articulate, very articulate and down to earth. Greatly good vibe, very energetic, can speak um, um, points that he's made. I guess that's articulate. Uh, Andy Bashir of Kentucky, the governor. He's Democrat in a Republican state or a red state. What does that tell you? He's doing something right. And Pete Buttigieg, our transportation secretary, who used to be the mayor of South Bend, Indiana. He was in the Navy as well, I believe. And he's uh, a Hoosier, because that's Indiana's or Hoosier, Hoosierites, Hoosiers. And I have a just a fondness for him because I feel like he is super, super articulate. He does not back down. He's clear, looks you in the eye. Yeah, it's I'm very excited about him. But couple of them I think are more than more likely to be her picks and right now as I'm saying this I kind of have an idea so I'm going to pull a couple cards for her where she's at in this situation she's in Georgia today today is the 30th yeah 2024 we're doing a rally packed to the gills the star so this is her cards right lovers so lovers is about not just uh, romantic love, but partnership, finding that person that is going to compliment you, right? So she's looking, she's looking, and the Hierophant, big, important picture, big, important decision. There's the owl. She's looking at the moon, deciding, using all her wisdom, uh, wisdom of the ages. Okay, so that's what she is. She's looking for someone to take with her that can support her but there's also the logistical issues with finding somebody from a state that maybe could pull you over the uh, finish line with that particular state if it's kind of one of those um, swing states okay thanks for being patient with me I sometimes get a little wordy and I go all over tangents oh before I forget <laughs> So sometimes I think of foods or desserts. In fact, I was making scones today. Those of you who come here often know I sometimes look at foods or I see people as foods, like I describe them because that's their personality. I made scones this morning. I saw somebody on TV making them and of course I had to make them. But I used this um, 
fruit, me- you know, like a berry medley, and it was it was too fruity. But I realized I hadn't chosen any anybody as a scone, so not that I need to right now. I'm just just a thought. Anyway, but I did see Kamala Harris as root vegetables in the past. Carrots squashed, glazed, caramelized, really good. And one of my commenters had mentioned that their, you know, roots are earthy and uh, grounded and um, stable, you know, and we can count on them and they're very nutritious and they don't move a lot and that you can, they're roots, right? So they can take a go with the you know they're very hard rooted and they don't give in easily and they stand by for what they need and they help the plant grow or the plant grows under the ground until it sprouts so there's a lot of under there's a lot of information underground which for her I believe is there's a lot of personality because she hasn't shown us yet and I since her original presidential campaign I found her very inauthentic and like she was on all the time and I didn't really think she'd be that great but since she's been the vice president and since now she's come out as the uh, presumptive nominee for the democratic party and so she's had these years with joe biden as her as his vp i find that she's much more relaxed much more confident about her delivery um about showing her first showing her true personality so i'm very excited i've switched i've turned the corner on her and I love that. Great. Um, I'll always be willing to hear an argument, right? Okay. So I saw her as root vegetables in the past, mostly carrots, squash, things that are yellow and orange. But I also now see her as having this, you know, nowadays, everybody's putting hot honey glaze on everything on chicken sandwiches or pizza or a lot of different things. I kind of see that on her. Sometimes on carrots, there'll be a honey glaze. I feel like this one's spicy. There's a spicy hot honey glaze on these root vegetables, which makes them even more delicious. <laughs> I'll take it or leave it. Ah. Anyway, so she's got the Hierophant, the Lovers, and the Star. So this decision, or her at this time, is karmic. It's a big energy shift that was in the stars, I think. It was meant to be. And that's why things have just exploded because we were ready people it feels it resonates with people many people maybe not everybody but it resonates that our lovely joe biden left the race and now she's in it and in the past i saw him going over the finish line but what i think and i said this in my short video yesterday was i see the white glow of divine light and that heart in the center and I see that going over the finish line of the election. And I always saw that as him. I still feel like that's him. But what that is, is his energy and his push and his legacy um, wrapping around the election and wrapping around the party, the feeling of um, the Democrats as we move forward. I didn't think of her necessarily as doing it, but I never saw her at all in the picture. But I do feel like his legacy, his um, energy, um, his history, and the love that most people or many people have for him is going to wrap around her, wrap around this whole experience as we move forward. And it's going to be sort of like a, a way of showing how we loved him. You know, this isn't quite the same, but you know how people get post posthumous Oscars for movies that once they passed away be- before they've, you know, say they made a movie and they've passed away before the Oscars and then they get a posthumous award. It feels like that. Like his legacy, his energy is going to push her uh, and the country into a new new direction new resonance all right so her choices like i said are mark kelly now uh kamala is uh born october 20th 1964 and so that gives her a she's a libra late libra into almost scorpio but she has a moon in uh aries so those are opposite so she's a hot tamale those that's those are very opposite things. Me or you, you or me, partnership, who's, whose needs are getting met, mine or yours. So, 
but that might be really good tension for her working for the country. And also she has a Gemini ascendant, which is really good. And I think that's got a big part of the United States birth chart. So Mark Kelly, he's an Aries and she has an Aries moon and they may not be conjunct, but he's also been in the service and he's an astronaut. Um, and Arizona is a big state that's very important to the next election. So I'm going to pull some cards on Mark Kelly. I feel as if he might be number two. At first I thought he was number one. Mark Kelly. Page of Wands. Four of Swords and Five of Swords. Mm, not looking good. Page of Wands. Lots of studying about the situation. Perhaps this is him debating whether he wants to. Uh, I know with his wife... Not that he has to be by her all the time, but her, his wife and her uh, injuries, she's been coming, you know, she's been healing for years from the gunshot to the head and she's had to learn to re-speak um, or learn to speak again. She's learned to, um, it, it's been amazing watching her. She says she, I watched a show one time. She says she knows what it is, but it can't come out. You know, she's very intelligent lady. Gabby Gifford, such a sad thing. Four of Swords. Thinking, thinking, not deciding, and Five of Swords. So I think it seems like it might be too much trouble that it's worth. So he was my number two. I thought he would be the one. Nine of Wands. No, I think that's too bad because I really like him. Uh something maybe they have to have a personality josh shapiro i feel like he's a little too polished but i'm gonna look into him i don't want to he's a gemini 620 73 it's funny a lot of these are right on the cusp they're on the 19th or 20th except for him and mark kelly no i'm sorry not him he's on 620 so he's a, a gemini into a cancer and she might find that his personality matches with her ascendant. Okay, Josh Shapiro. Josh Shapiro. Oh, she, Josh Shapiro. Hmm. 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 He might have some secrets. I got the tower, the high priestess, and the moon. There's some things that are not known, maybe, about him or not... Maybe they haven't met each other. So maybe that's it. Maybe there's some unknown or some things behind the scenes, some possible questions that have not been addressed that relate to him. Because, you know, these people get dissected upwards and sideways. And even though you're in government, when you get to be that high level vice president or president, they rip you to shreds, right, to find any flaws. There's some secret, there's some something behind the scenes or some sort of, I don't want to say negative thing, but it's something that is not known yet and it may cause her to question. Okay, that was Josh Shapiro. Tim Waltz of Minnesota, he's an Aries, 4, 6, 64. So they're the same age, just a few months apart. Um, so she's an Aries moon, he's a sun in Aries, which might bode well for them. Page of Swords. He looks intelligent. Wheel of Fortune, timing, and Two of Swords. Oh, okay. So he's a possibility. He's definitely a possibility. Page of Page of Swords is you know somebody who's got great ideas and is very um, inspired in how they speak. And like I said, he's very inspirational in how he speaks. Wheel of Fortune, which is timing. Everything has its seasons, and then the Two of Swords, deciding. So me, he actually may be deciding, I don't know if it's him debating or if it's her debating. No, I think it's her debating. I don't think it's him. I think he would take her up on it. Um, okay, now, Andy Bashir, the lovely Kentucky governor, Democrat in a red state, his birthday is 1129. So he's a Capricorn, deep into Capricorn, which, and he's 1977. So he's pretty young. Um, lots of years ahead of him. 
to get into heavy, higher level politics. He's doing a great job for as a governor. Ah, I almost feel like he's not either not ready or interested. My feeling from him is that he's Andy Bashir. Oh, Nine of Pentacles. Eight of Pentacles. Oh, Knight of Cups. Oh my goodness. Hmm. These are the best cards so far. Interesting. Nine of Pentacles, Eight of Pentacles, Knight of Cups. There's an offer. I don't know if he's reaching out to her or she's reaching out to him. But there is an opening. This Knight of Cups is she's playing with somebody's heart because it's an offer. But I always see that see that hole in the heart there. I feel like it's an opening to put something in. Any for sure. Definitely so far the best one. Um and as a Capricorn, that's very interesting. Um, so far, it's um, Tim Waltz and Andy Bashir and Pete Buttigieg, which another one that's young. And January 19th, he's a, a late Capricorn into Aquarius. And in 1982, I think, young baby. <laughs> he's also in the Navy, mayor of South Bend, Pete Buttigieg. She knows him from the cabinet. Nine of Swords, King of Pentacles, Three of Cups. No, I don't think so. This doesn't feel right. Uh, no, no, I don't. Well, they've got the Ten of Swords and the Nine of Cups, but the they've got it's a mixed bag. I feel like there's a bunch of really good things about him. Um, I almost wonder if. They not like they don't hit it off very well. I almost feel like they might not. That's my own personal thing. It has nothing to do with the cards here. That's what I see. I almost get this feeling that it doesn't flow easy. And you have to find a vice president, as I imagine one does as one's president, that meshes with your viewpoint or that's easy to work with, that you actually like, or at least serves a purpose that you can, you know, and you tolerate and you can have them live in your world. And, uh, yeah, so, okay. Andy Bashir had the best cards, and then uh, Tim Waltz would be second. That's very interesting. Okay, now if I meditate on those and don't use the cards, um, Mark Kelly, I don't think, I don't know if it's the right time for him. I don't think so. Uh, Josh Shapiro. There's something weird, something, I don't know exactly weird, but Josh Shapiro and Kamala Harris. No, I don't think so. Tim Waltz, that feels better. And Andy Bashir. that feels better too. And people do just know. So between my guess, and it could change tomorrow, as I said the thing with, you know, the staying in the race with Joe Biden, Andy Bashir, magician. Things are in her hands. There's a lot of choices to be made, but the, all the tools are there. So Andy Bashir or Tim Waltz, those are my choices. If I had to pick one, gun to my head, uh, which is a horrible turn of a phrase. I'm going to say Minnesota Tim Waltz, even though Andy Bashir's cards were better. I feel like, but logically that doesn't make sense. Pennsylvania is a bigger state that she needs. Arizona is an important state, but I feel like that he would be a good one for her. I'm going to just say that Tim Walls, Minnesota. Okay. Uh, oh yeah. So this Paul Dan's. Moving on, Doc, the director of Project 2025. <sighs> what happened? Ten of Wands. Mm. He was overburdened. It was too much. And I guess they've had this planned for since 2022. It's supposed to be their platform.
I have this feeling that he or someone they came up with the the outline or the framework or the skeleton of this idea and little by little they expanded on these different areas of the project like Medicaid how to spend you know the budget tax reform because they want to give them take away the tax payments to the rich and give it you know make the poor pay more and take away Medicaid um, a lot of services for Medicaid or Medicare and also the uh, veterans benefits they want to limit those and take reduce those just all the things that cost them money in public education they want to the, you know eliminate the Department of Education and make it a probably a privatizing where people have to pay and I'm guessing I have no idea if that's true but that's the feeling I get and uh, but I think what happened is they had this skeleton they had all these this outline of what they were gonna do and little by little it got out of hand it got great I think it's like 900 pages it's crazy and I think it's gotten come not just complex complicated but they started adding and adding and doing this and doing this and saying well we do this here we've got to change that there and they made it more complicated and they made it worse and worse and worse because they could because it was this ideal for the conservative movement or the heritage foundation which is a think tank which to me is not a conservative movement and then the tower I'm wondering if they, um, let me think for a second, Knight of Pentacles, slow. Um, I think there's infighting. There's a lot of infighting because Trump hasn't really said that he's, you know, he's like, I don't know anything about that, but he does. Uh, and I think they are talking, um, there's a lot of infighting between Trump's team and then this heritage foundation team and i know they're all working together but i feel like they're kind of blaming each other for the grandiose ideas or the um negative connotation the negative um, impact it's having on the republican base because they're starting to look at it and read it just by bits and bits people are starting to look and go wait a minute people you know not just immigrants get Medicaid, you know, white people, poor people, people of all colors get Medicaid and Medicare. Your grandma gets Medicare and veterans that they love are getting benefits. Why would you take those away? Social security, why would they limit that? That's like their base. Why would they do that? So I think some of this has gotten out of hand. And so he resigned because either he allowed it to get that big or he got tired of everybody pushing and he said the other way. I think it was it was just competing goals from this group, the Heritage Foundation and the Trump's old, like Stephen Miller, his cabinet and all those old people on his end. So what's going to happen? Well, the Project 2025, oh, Ten of Wands again. Wows, wowzers. Two of Swords. Decisions, decision, can't decide, can't decide. So I think they're all like infighting and trying to figure out what we're going to do. How can we promote this in a rational way that people will actually eat it, love it, swallow it up? Because it is too much, too much, too much, too much. Something's going to happen. Either they're going to say, okay, we've reduced it down to these things. So you guys, well, don't worry about all these other things. We're just going to limit it to Project 2025 2.0. And um, they're going to sell it somehow, some way, some different way, because they're scared. Um, VP Harris's group is uh, making them scared. They're making all kinds of money. The energy is super positive for her. And they're going to have to change how they're marketing it and how people are seeing it. They don't know what they're doing. I mean, they don't know how to move forward with it. It's very, um, so they're blaming him and he is part of the problem, obviously. So he's the director, but okay, that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming by. And I love that you're here. And I'm going to next time, I think I'm going to look into more politics. If Trump will actually debate Harris. Um, and is he going to cancel J.D. Vance? 
We'll see. Till next time. Thanks for coming by. <laughs>